On today's RIMPAC tutorial, we're going to start looking into one of the most exciting aspects of making a visual novel, in my opinion, which is customizing the look of your game. This is also a really important step that a lot of people overlook, um, but this can really set your game apart and make it feel unique. It's still going to have that RIMPAC feel, uh, but you can kind of make everything your own. You know, I'm going to show you how to use your own custom fonts, how to use uh, different um, different backgrounds, and customize different things about the, about the menu system. So this is going to be part one of a several part series. I don't know if I'm going to do all of these in sequence, but I might just do one of these uh, customization options, you know, every couple of weeks um, as I'm doing the um, as I'm doing the other series about RimPy uh, programming specifically. And we are going to get into a little bit of the uh, the programming on this one as well. All right, so um, I've got my RimPy launcher open, and I've got. YouTube tutorials tutorials highlighted. So um, we're going to deal with a couple of different folders in this one. Um, actually, one folder in particular, um, as well as a different um, script file. Normally, we, we've been using the script.rpy, and I think we created one specifically for our characters. But uh, we're going to use some of the different ones this time in order to achieve some different things. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to um, is how to add a custom font to your game. And the first thing that I'm going to do is change the menu font. Uh, so right now, um, actually, let's go ahead and, and uh, get our fonts first. And uh, there are a few good places to get fonts. Um, your computer comes with a, with a, a bunch of fonts pre-installed already and if you have different pieces of software you might have more uh, font options but you can also find different fonts by searching on the internet just if you do that be sure that you pay close attention to the usage rights for them um, a lot of them you're supposed to pay for if you end up using them or some of them you can download freely for personal use uh, but they're only licensed for personal use if you want to use them in a paid product uh, then you have to then you have to pay royalties to the creator either that or or buy it from them outright more often than not. Um, but another option is to go to the Google Fonts page at fonts.google.com, and they have a bunch of open source fonts um, that you can uh, that you can download, and these are free to use for any reason, even commercially. So if you find any fonts on here that you like, and there are many, many, many different fonts of many, many different types, um, you can feel free to download those and use them however you choose. Um, and basically, when you download a font, it will download to your downloads folder by default. It should download as either a zip file or uh, or a uh, a winrar.rar file. Um, and you can install it just by double clicking on the file inside of the archive. You might have to extract it first. Um, you've probably done that before. Uh, but you can just double click it, and it will give you an option to uh, install when the font opens up. But for this, um, we don't actually need to install the font, but we do need to move it into a fonts folder. So let me move that back out of the way, and I will show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and open the base game directory. So whenever you, you put in a custom font, it's automatically going to look for it in the base directory. Um, so let me see. Oh, actually, I think I may have said it wrong. Hang on just a moment. Yeah, scratch that. It's going to be in the game directory. There we go. There it is. So I've already got one uh, dropped in here called Mountains of Christmas Bold uh, that I downloaded from uh, fonts.google.com. So like I said, it's going to look for it automatically in your fonts folder, and I'm going to show you how to add it from here. But if you have a lot of fonts or if, you're, if your project starts to grow, you might want to consider uh, creating a dedicated folder just to house your fonts or maybe your fonts and some other things. Um, but if you do that, you do have to put that file path. So from your game file path, you'll have to put like slash fonts slash and then the name of your font. Um, so for right now, I'm just going to leave it in the base folder and I'm just going to highlight that and copy it. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do, and I've actually already got this opened up, but I'll show you how to get there. We're going to go to the GUI or the GUI directory. Um, Actually, not the directory, I'm sorry, but the uh, uh, file, uh, gui.rpy, and uh, just click on that. I've already got mine open, but it should open to a screen that looks either very similar or probably identical to this one. And um, so now we're going to start, we're gonna start uh, altering some of the files that are included in RenPy. 
Um, I always get nervous whenever I do this because I'm afraid I'm going to screw something up, which I have done before. So I recommend that before you alter anything in here, especially if it's your first time, um, we should be okay today. I don't think I'm going to show you anything that can really get messed up, but it still doesn't hurt to create a backup of this file uh, to put somewhere else. Either that or just create like, you know, a playground thing. Like basically that's what I'm doing in this one um, is, is I've, I've got this YouTube tutorials thing. It doesn't have much in it. So if I screw it up, it's no big deal. I can just wipe it and start over fresh. But you might want to go ahead and create a backup of this in case you accidentally break something and you have to pull this back in. All right, so when you have the uh, GUI.RPY file open, you want to scroll down to about line 55, I believe is where it is. Uh, let me see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, where you see fonts and font sizes. And then this is all of the different fonts that you can use uh, that are used in your game. And right now, everything uses the default font, which is called Deja Vu Sans .ttf. TTF is true type font. That's the type of uh, font file. Uh, that all of these are using. I believe you can also use OTF, which is, I think, open type font. There might be one or two other ones, but pretty much any font file that you get should be either a TTF or an OTF. I don't know that I've seen anything, anything besides those. So I'm going to go ahead and change the font for the GUI text, the text on the graphical user interface, and I'm just going to highlight where it says Deja Vu Sans and uh, get rid of that, and then I'm just going to Control V and paste what I did before. This one is also a, a true type uh, font file, so I'm just gonna leave that .ttf in place. You do need the file extension on there, so be sure that you have that correct. Um, and I'm gonna show you what that does in just a moment. Let me go ahead and save that. Um, but first, I'm gonna show you a couple of other things real quick that I've already done. Um, so let me pull my launcher back and I'm going to go into the back into the GUI folder. There we go. And um, all right, so in this one, I've got a couple of images that I put in. I put this one in called Window Icon. Normally, there's a file in here called Window Icon that uses the the default uh, RenPy logo logo, and that's what gives you your um, icon on your taskbar whenever you have your program open. And I actually have my taskbar hidden on the on the bottom, so you won't be able to see that. Uh, but whenever I open it, it's going to display this instead of the regular um, instead of the regular RenPy icon on the taskbar. And um, I created this uh, in a uh, combination of using DAS 3D. This is a DAS render. So if you need uh, some information on how to use DAS 3D, be sure to check out my other channel where I do DAS tutorials. And um, I'll actually I'll drop a link in the comments to the one. Um, that to the video that shows you how to get this comic book kind of cell shaded hand drawn look. Um, but anyway, you just want to make sure that this uh, file is 250 by 250 pixels, 250 wide by 250 high. Different sizes might work, but I found out the hard way that that causes very, very strange behavior on some operating systems. Um, the one that I used originally was was way too large for the first um, visual novel that I produced, and it worked fine on my computer. It automatically scaled it down, but I had a lot of Linux users where it completely broke the program because they didn't know what to do with this large um, icon. So again, just go ahead and keep that at 250 by 250. Um, oh, and I just uh, 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 imported that into Photoshop and, uh, and uh, fix the size there. All right, um, if we go into overlay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna show you how to change the background for the main menu. So my main, main menu um, by default was just a really boring purple background. So I'm gonna show you how to change that to an image. And there are a few different ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you what in my experience is the easy way, easiest way. This way does have some issues, but it should work for the vast majority of users. So if I go into overlay, the overlay folder, um, I have a uh, file called main menu. Let me open that up. And this is my main menu file. I also created this one using Dash 3D and Photoshop. And this one should be the same size as your game resolution, which mine is 1920 by 1080. So that's 19, uh, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. That is high definition. That's as high as uh, that, that RenPy can, uh, can produce. Um, so just uh, create that file, call it main menu, and that has to go into the game GUI 
overlay folder or this will not work. It has to go in there. And if you need to check and see what resolution your game is, you can actually check at the top of the GUI file. You'll see there's a block that says init Python and it says GUI.init 1920 by 1080. So that'll tell you what your resolution is, 1920 wide by 1080 high. And just a whatever image you use, just make sure it's that same size. All right, so we got the, uh, the font changed and then we got our uh, window icon changed and we got our game menu also changed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load that up and show you what our changes look like. All right, we're back. I had a couple of minor technical difficulties that I had to work out real quick, but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you what I fixed. Um, so first of all, my font didn't show up correctly because I changed the uh, GUI text font, which is used for in-game text. I was wanting to change the menu, which is out-of-game text. So I had to change the GUI.interface underscore text underscore font. So that didn't break my game, but it just made it where my text looked the same as it did before. So be sure you change um, uh, that one for in-game text. That's gonna be like the dialogue. And then GUI.interface dot, uh, dot text font. That one is for the actual, uh, the actual menu screen. All right, let's load that in one more time and we'll check that out. There we go, that's looking a whole lot better. So now um, I have my new screen, my title screen, it's got my characters on it, and then over on the left, I've got my menu, which has a couple of problems, but I'll go ahead and show you how to fix that. But first, if we go to the submenus like preferences, you notice everything now has this different font, and I actually like that font quite a bit. I'm probably gonna end up uh, producing this one, turning it into a full game, and I think I'm gonna leave that font like it is. I really, really like that one. Uh, you can go to the about screen, so all of that, yeah, it all uses that same font now. Even down here, the YouTube tutorials, uh, the title, and then the version number, um, all of that stuff. So really cool so far. Um, and yeah, there we go. All right. Um, now let's go ahead and go back. There are a, a couple of things I'm going to fix. First of all, I don't love the gray text. So since I put in my own menu screen, um, this is no longer uh, kind of uh, darkened out. This did have like a transparent but darkened area, which made the... Uh, which made the um, um, which made the menu pop out a little bit, but now that's gone. There is a way to put that back in, which I might cover in a future video, but for now, I'm gonna try to do this a different way, and I'm gonna make that text a little bit larger, and I'm gonna brighten it up. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the GUI.RPY uh, file, and we're gonna look for GUI configuration variables, and the particular one that we're looking for is GUI.idle underscore color. And this one says the color used for a text button when it is neither selected nor hovered. Hovered is when you hold your mouse over it but don't click anything. When you click it, that means that it's selected. And um, that means that it's selected. And I'll go ahead and show you uh, that in action real quick. So if I launch my project again, right now it's in it, the uh, everything is in the idle state. And then when I hover over it, it turns purple. And that is the um, hovered state, and then if I click it, now you see how it's white. That is the um, that is the selected state. All right, so right now I want that color to be a little bit brighter when it's not selected. So I'm going to go ahead and make that plain white. So again, GUI dot idle color, and right now it's set to a a a a a a. And we talked before about how to use uh, HTML hex codes. And I already know that FFF, FFF is pure white. This might conflict with our um, selected color. I'm gonna be okay for that with that for right now. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and change that uh, real quick. So selected color, I'm just gonna have those trade places. Oops. So now when it's selected, when it's gray, when it's idle, it'll be white. That might not be perfect, but it'll at least work for illustrative purposes. Uh, so now, um, oh, I'm also going to make that font a little bit larger. So if I go back down to my fonts, uh, font and font sizes. So down here are all of the different font sizes, which we can also change, just like we changed our font. So we're going to do uh, GUI.interface text font. Let me look for interface text size. There it is. Right now it's at 43. Let's make that a 53. Let's give that a pretty good bump up, and that should make it a little bit more readable. All right, let me close that, and let's reopen it and see what that looks like now. 
There we go. And still not perfect, but I'm a lot happier with that. And I think I can leave it there for right now. We'll talk about further customization options next time. I actually don't love the text being on the left. I prefer it to be lined up on the bottom. So uh, we may cover that in a different one. I'll show you how to move the text to different areas of the screen. Um, however, I'm, I'm good with the way it is for right now. So uh, let's see, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And I have some great things coming up. I'm probably going to end up uh, expanding the scope of my channel a little bit and uh, doing like a pure coding section, teaching uh, Python and some Python modules and maybe some other programming languages, which are just good to learn just for general knowledge, but they will also help with your RenPy programming in general. Um, and so be looking, uh, be looking for that sometime soon. And until, oh yeah, uh, one more thing. Don't forget to check out my other channel I mentioned before on Daz3D uh, if you need some graphics for your game. And that will do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.